Hello my soccer universe. Personally, I had kind of a weird weekend with my two teams. Both did not play well. However, last got a win. Milan a really bad nil-nil draw. So yeah, four point weekend. I guess I gotta be satisfied, but performances would have helped. But I refer you to the Austrian Bundesliga and Serie A review videos that I have made. Because everywhere else in Europe, there was actually quite some exciting stuff. We had two really wild games in Germany and quite some turnarounds in the table as well. We had in Spain, it's getting tight up top. Barcelona is dropping points with also one of the weirdest finishes to a game that you can imagine. And we had the result of the week in Spurs going to City and absolutely destroying them there. Meaning that the Premier League is now going Liverpool's way. So, strap in, we'll start in Germany. For once we can report about a good result by Dortmund, winning at home to Freiburg, who were kind of level on the table with them, 4-0 at home. Maxi Bayer gave Dortmund an early lead, then Freiburg actually missed some pretty big chances before a matchup before the halftime. Made it a 2-0, didn't help that Osterhage was sent off and from the free kick then Julian Brandt makes it 3-0 and it got ugly with, with Jamie Gittens adding a fourth and then also Adamo being sent off for Freiburg. So overall their trip to Dortmund was not a good one. However, this was by far not the best set the afternoon game. We had two seven goal games. One by Leverkusen beating Heidenheim 5-2 after being 2-0 down after 21 minutes. However, Hattrick of Patrick Schick, Palacios and Grani Chaka turn it around and it shows that there's a good attitude in the Leverkusen squad. However, the craziest game of the entire weekend must have been Hoffenheim's 4-3 win over Leipzig on Chris Ilse's debut for Hoffenheim. Leipzig had three times the lead and it was actually a crazy sequence between the 15th and 19th minutes where Orban had given Leipzig the lead, then he's done more or less at fault for the equalizer in the 17th minute by Hlosek and then almost immediately again Nusser re-establishes the lead for Leipzig. Second half, Bischoff gets the equalizer for Hoffenheim, but then an Ozoki on goal re-establishes the lead for Leipzig. But then came the crucial substitution by Chris Ilse. He brings on Brun Larsen, who first off assists Losek to get the equalizer and then he scores after a really great cross the winner himself. That was a super, super exciting game. And with that loss and a Mario Götze goal just before the halftime, Frankfurt now move into second place behind Bayern. Yes, they're far off, but Frankfurt are definitely one of the informed teams in the Bundesliga. They were overall the better team against Bremen. However, it was not a super convincing performance as well. However, already on Friday up top, Bayern Munich get a 3-0 win over Augsburg through a Harry Kane hat-trick. The first two were penalties. The third one though was a great goal where he almost imitates the Bundesliga logo, taking it down with the leg and then heading it in. It was actually a really, really great goal. It sounds funny when two goals are scored in stoppage time. However, Bayern were much the better team. Augsburg were only therefore defending. Once Bayern had broken him down, there was only one way. Bayern really set on getting the title back. Well, not much has changed up top in the Eredivisie because all the top six teams won. We had three 2-1 away wins, namely by Utrecht at Nijmegen. We had AZ winning at Sparta Rotterdam and Twente at Sittard exactly with the scoreline and the top three got very convincing scorelines at home with clean sheets with Feyenoord beating Herdenwein 3-0 we had leaders PSV beating Groningen 5-0 at home with Ricardo Pepli scoring a hat-trick and also Ajax a 2-0 at home versus Zwolle The big story in France over the past two weeks was of course the DNCG verdict that sees Lyon potentially being relegated if they cannot come up with the money, which is rather odd as Lyon are currently in contention for a European spot and even on the weekend they got a 1-1 at Reims, no Keita Nakamura goal, which keeps them up there but also the only top team that didn't win. Because already on Friday, Monaco beat Brest 3-2 at home thanks to an Eric Lush brace. We also had PSG winning 3-0 at home against Toulouse utter domination, although the last two goals came rather late. And when they're not playing at home, OM can also have a good showing. This time a 3-1 win at loss. I think that's quite a remarkable result. All the goals coming in the second half. Rangier, Luis Enrique giving Marseille already a 2-0 lead. Then Fulgini pulls one back. There was an equalizer for loss being called off for a foul. And then Pierre I mean, Heuberg secures the three points for OM. Lille get a 1-0 home win thanks to a Jegrova goal over Rennes and also Nice come back at home to win 2-1 against Strasbourg. Also notable not being down the table losing 2-0 at home to Le Havre and it was overshadowed by fan protests during the game.
The emotional highlight of the La Liga weekend definitely had to be Valencia's 4-2 win over Betis after all the catastrophic flooding in the region. And Hugo Duro was the man of the match, first equalizing an early lead for Valencia with an own goal in the 14th minute, but then in a flurry of three goals right after the half, he scores two. Lopez adds another one and so relegation threatened Valencia actually have given themselves a little bit of a lifeline. Immediately afterwards, Atletico Madrid score late to turn around the game against Alaves. It's a Griezmann penalty and a Surloth goal that give Atleti another win. Then we also had the crazy island duel where Mallorca get a 3-2 win in Las Palmas. They had a 2-0 lead right after the half. However, Las Palmas came roaring back in the 83rd minute, got an equalizer. Then Morici misses a chance and is taunted by Mata, where he responds them with flipping him the bird, for which he's sent off. However, since he was taunted, a free kick was given inside of the box, from which Mojica gets the winner for Mallorca. One of the craziest sequences involving VAR that I have seen. Meanwhile, Girona prepare themselves very well for the Champions League exploits. They win 4-1 in the derby against Espanyol, leading 4-0 already in the 27th minute. Brian Hill, Miofsky scoring two and Krejci also getting in on the action. Cuado scores one after half, so Espanyol at least won the second half. However, most of the attention is on top of the La Liga table, where Barca drop points again. They had a 2-0 lead through Rafinha and Lewandowski in the 61st minute. However, two goals in two minutes by Gonzalez and Alvarez pull two back for Celta de Vigo. However, the performance overall for Barca was not all that great. And now, with a game in hand, Real Madrid could cut Barca's lead to only a single point. They get a relatively easy 3-0 win at Leganes, with all the big boys being involved in the goals. First, Vinny assists Mbappé for his first goal. Then, Valverde, after being assisted by Ada Güler, gets another one. And Bellingham also gets again on the score sheet. And so, Real Madrid win the game in hand. They might put more pressure on Barca. And then, to finish the round, we had the always atmospheric derby of the Basque country between Atlético Atletic Club and Real Sociedad, it's Atletic Club that win that one through a sunset goal assisted by Nico Williams. It was the result that sent shockwaves through Europe when Spurs went to City and beat them 4-0. Their unbeaten streak at home done and dusted five losses in a row for Pep Guardiola. That never has happened or maybe it has happened once he has clinched already a title with Bayern. But most damningly so is that it could be a much higher result. City were only in the game until Madison made it 1-0 and then they were completely taken apart. Madison adds a second one in the 20th minute. It could have gotten really, really ugly. Heck, it was already ugly. Pedro Porro even scores a third in the 52nd minute and Timo Werner also gets in on the action, assisting Brennan Johnson on the fourth goal in the 93rd minute. It's a great result for Spurs. However, with Spurs, as always, it is consistency because against the top teams, they do well. At the bottom teams, not so much. As for City, they are now sitting eight points behind Liverpool ahead of the big clash at Anfield next weekend. And Liverpool could extend the lead to eight points thanks to a turnaround in the second half because although Soboslai had given Liverpool a 1-0 lead, Armstrong equalized just before the half on a rebound from a penalty. And Fernandes even gave Southampton the lead. However, Mohamed Salah with two goals, second one a penalty. Turnaround for Liverpool, who maybe look not as in control as they usually do, but still have to be considered now the absolute favorites for the Premier League title, but we will say more about them after next week's game. Arsenal, meanwhile, got a very easy 3-0 win at home to Nottingham Forest with Bukayo Saka and Odegaard running the show. Party also scoring in Vaneri after Raheem Sterling assist as a third, which is probably good for the squad, but Arsenal still behind Chelsea, who get a 2-1 away win at Leicester with Nico Jackson and Enzo Fernandes getting the two goals for them in an overall deserved win that saw then Steve Cooper of Leicester fired right afterwards. And also a few other quite interesting results in the Premier League. On Saturday we had Villa salvaging a 2-2 draw thanks to a Ross Barkley goal in the second half against Crystal Palace who twice took the lead. However, Tielemans also missed a penalty for Villa. Glasner may be getting a turnaround for Villa, but on the other side Villa is also a team that is kind of reeling at the moment. We had Brighton getting a rather routine 2-1 win at Bournemouth. Not necessarily being the better team, but being the more ruthless team. And they stay up there on top of the table where it's actually really tight behind Liverpool. Everton and Brentford, nil-nil draw. Was going more Everton's way, especially since Nurgard was sent off 
just before the half. And probably the most notable result was Fulham 1, Wolves 4. Fulham had a 1 0 lead, Cunha equalized before the half, and then it's a flurry of goals in the second half. Is this the turnaround for Wolves that was sorely needed? We have to see that. At least they move out of the relegation zone right now. Then Ipswich took on Manchester United on Ruben Amorim's debut. Yes, Rashford gave United the early lead. However, Ipswich were largely better game. There were some good saves by Onana in that ends 1-1. One, one. Ruben Amorim definitely saw that there's a lot of work to do for him. And finally, West Ham go to Newcastle and beat them 2-0 away from on Monday evening. Also, a result that I did not necessarily expect. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!